And good afternoon. Welcome to today at the race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter along with our odds maker Keith Fustel. Another beautiful afternoon of racing for you here at Laurel Park. Sunday brunch is cooking. And what a big day we had Oof. yesterday. Our spring steak spectacular lived up to right. the building. We had a huge crowd out here. Thanks to all our fans coming out here. The joint was packed. We had a nice handle yesterday. The feature of the day, the express bet Federico Tessio, nine furlongs for three-year-olds and John Servers has a nice three-year-old Diamond King punches his ticket to the 143rd Preakness. He got the kind of trip I thought would lay just off the other speed. Cassie's horse dogged him around the racetrack. Uh, asserted himself leaving the eighth pole after pretty much an extended duel from the 5 16th to the eighth. Uh, then had all off the late charge of Englehart's horse, who was really kind of ran sneaky good. Looked well beaten leaving the far turn, but came on late for second. But you got to like uh, Diamond King, especially off a little bit of a fresh and he get that mile and eight distance like that that should put a lot of bottom into him moving forward so he was the big winner in the tessio how about the maryland bred philly right here at laurel park she trains for jason egan mm -hmm. good one honey off that impressive debut maiden win and only her second career start she steps up the stakes company in the weber city miss she goes right to the front and wins going away like a good thing good one honey going to the black eyed susan Kind of stole the show yesterday, didn't yeah, she? I mean, yeah. I mean, she was, she took the money. We thought I kind of even lined her a little bit lower. I had her originally at eight, dropped her to six. Um, wasn't quite surprised that Diamond King went off at favorite, but uh, hey, you know, to do that after the one sprint against a maiden forty, you know, she she was in there and did the right thing, got the waiver first time out. But man, she went quick. She went quick and just kept on going. Kept a on sign going, of a yep. really good horse. Yep, and I just saw Steve Hamilton this morning. Uh, he checked in with Jason Egan Barn okay. this morning. The Philly came back right. good. So nice to have a Maryland Brad who trains right here at Laurel Park for an up-and-coming young trainer, Jason Egan, with a good one there, with good one, honey. And then our No Delacour had the popular favorite, Shalon, and the Priminetta. The, the Dahlia went to a little upset there. Yeah. Hallie Bell, Sheldon Russell, and Michael Stidham, a nice little, little $31 upset there. S sniped Hawksmoor at the wire and a great ride by Sheldon Russell. Save ground eased out found a little seam in between horses leaving the eighth ball boy did she level off the last 16th of a mile to get up at the wire and then uh, Paco Lopez, he had a good day. He had two stake wins. He won on Shalon, right, for, yeah. for, for Delacour, and he won on Caribou Club for Tom Proctor in that big field to Henry S. Clark. Yeah, yeah, a Caribou Club saved ground, got through a good job. I didn't think he was, you know, that good. You know, he obviously showed it yesterday. And Shalon, a nice win. Had to kind of rush up into quick internals, did it, and, and it held on late. Had turned away a, a really informed horse in Karen uh, from the Reed Barn. So Shalon, really sharp effort as well yesterday afternoon. And it was good to see the seven-year-old Maryland bred Flash Phelps with a respectable effort and the Henry S. Clark coming off that long layoff, a good third yeah. against a real tough group. Got the trip I thought would sit and he got good position three wide, just quite, wasn't quite good enough. It'll set him up for next time. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at today. Beautiful weather. The birds are chirping here by the historic Laurel Park paddock. There are the tracks. will be fast and firm. Perfect conditions uh, for the turf course. Still a little, uh, still a little uh, of a speed favored maybe yesterday. Yeah, slight. I mean, your better horse were able to kind of make up ground. We saw from Halley Bell coming from mid pack. I still want to be fairly close within probably four lengths turning for home uh, in the routes. Three or four length sprints, maybe even a little bit. Uh, you know, a little closer, just just in stand. Uh, thanks to Dave Robin. Uh, preliminary buyers, Diamond King, 84. Uh, good one, honey, 86. Okay. So Philly a little quicker yep. than the boy yesterday. All right, good, respectable uh -huh. uh, buyers for those three-year-olds. Uh, mm -hmm. With our big wins yesterday, let's get right to it. Uh, we showed you the uh, the tracks, uh, the weather today mm -hmm. in the 60s, fast yep. and firm, first race at 110. What else? Uh, the pick six today, pick six, a little over yeah. 6,100, uh -huh. I believe. So that's building up in the mm -hmm. pick six. That's going to start race five today on our 10-race program, over 6,100 in that 20-cent rainbow pick six. I know you like the middle pick four. Yeah. starting race four today i like the late pick five with that low 12 percent takeout late pick five starts in race six so we'll take a look at all those tickets here in a second sunday brunch is cooking for you we can smell it up there in the garden oh, terrace yeah. and tips get a get a window side view of the track up there in tips or garden terrace best uh, best deal in town there oh, sunday yeah. brunch 20 to a person yeah you can't you got to take here. advantage of it come out here we see the crowds getting better each and every weekend a quality product put put on up there at the garden terrace and uh, talking about trainer Jason Egan, next Saturday, Phoebe Hayes having her popular racing 101 here at Laurel Park. And Jason Egan going to be the one of the barns that she's taken oh, nice. uh, those racing fans back to see. So yeah. uh, good, uh, good stuff there. Let's get right to it here 
in race one. Race one's going to kick off the rolling super high five. Little carryover today in race one. Over 1,400 in the super high five with that low 15% takeout. That starts in race one. Keep your eye on that. Also in race one, we kick off the early pick five. Mandatory payout here on the early pick five. Industry low 12% takeout. Video spotlight for you here in race one. The one prank call I use in my exact. This horse is going to show speed from the inside with Ricardo Chappie aboard for Wayne Potts. Let's show you the race from March 31st yeah. right here at Laurel Park. Went to the front that day against 35,000 company. A real good second behind Bay of Cats. Bay of Cats yeah. just came back to right. win. Uh, this weekend. Here's prank call from uh, late March here at Laura. Strong, strong effort and got entangled in a duel with a very quick, uh, I'll be a long shot score early and often. Uh, they, they were rolling there early, uh, 22 and 446 flat. Uh, prank call able to kind of shake clear after the duel at the eighth pole. Uh, Dad City Girl, you're going to see moving to the outside. She's back in this race again and also has speed and she may try to get the jump on prank call today, but a uh, prank call dead game through the final three sixteenths of a mile, just a little bit better was Bay of Cats, as as we saw evident, went back and, you know, won the allowance race next time out just the other day. So prank call well spotted. Uh, looks like a good claim here uh, for Wayne Potts. All right, I, I you have that horse on top. I, I have her in my exact. I think this race might set up for a closure. There could be a lot of speed in this yeah. race. Uh, the one's going to show speed. The two, Hunka Bunka Brown, might show speed coming off the layoff for Joan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, some early speed with Dad City Girl, uh, Younger Girl for Trez Abbott, the Queen of Checkmate, Presenter's going to get a nice stalking trip on the outside with uh, Sheldon Russell. I think it, I'm going to use my uh, my reliable closer, the four she core mm -hmm. with the Bug Boy Weston Hamilton aboard for Pat McGill. Weston Hamilton and Georgie Vargas, they, they tied for leading right or did Vargas go one ahead yesterday? I'm not sure. I, I think they're tied yeah. for leading right or, oh. or the or okay. one, one went apart. Uh, so a very tight uh, jockey race going in to the final couple weeks of this long winter spring meet. Weston Hamilton's going to be coming late on this three-year-old filly by Frisian Fire. She's a four-time winner here at Laurel Park. She went, ran well first off <coughs> first off the claim for the newborn. Last out for 15000 She steps up a little bit here to 25000 again. Uh, I like her coming late, the four yeah, she court. Plenty of speed in here, no doubt about it. I don't think my top selection prank call necessarily needs to lead, but I think she's going to be forward a long way. She core, the blinkers have gone on. So she's held form throughout. Doesn't matter, you know, in what barn. She's doing well. Um, and at the five and a half with this much speed, you might see a more effective run sure. uh, starting uh, mid-turn and, and carrying it to the wire. Queen to checkmate. First time, Claudio. That's all you got to say. You can't leave her out of your exact. This is another one that's going to be forwardly placed. We'll get a good stalking trip. Little raise off the claim. That's a positive. And fix up Pimentel, a uh, real crafty veteran rider. So uh, could be a little bit of a tell uh, for Queen to check. Maybe. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, first time, Claudio. And also, you're going from uh, a bug boy has been on this horse the last, what, 10 times. Now you're going to Pimentel. Mm -hmm. uh, so strong connections there with the six queen, the checkmate. Let's turn the page. Race two is going to kick off the early pick four, going six furlongs here mm -hmm. in the second race, claiming 11,000, three and up, some old time warriors in this race. You have the 10 year old Sam Sparkle in this race, who's made over a half million dollars. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, yep, okay, we're both going with the trip horse, right? I the, think, the, the, yeah. eight, eight, the eight final form is going to get the best trip in here, but I, I think by far has early, has speed, uh, has a, with an outside post to bug boy Luis Rodriguez aboard for Dale Capuano final form a five-time winner here at Laurel Park and uh, this bug boy and, and Dale Capuano they're 28 percent together this uh this five-year-old's in good form nice win against open 7500 last out I think he'll get a beautiful stalking trouble-free trip on the outside today yeah showing you know suddenly showing a little bit more speed than what he's shown in the past and showed two moves last time stand when rating back and then angling out to make a run hey Willie I've got a little bit line too high he'll come down off of that back into Kieran, McG Kieran McGee barn. Is he a little bit better on a wet track, a little quicker? I don't know, but with the scratch, we have a scratch of the NXS again, right? Is out of here, if I'm not mistaken. The, I, I'm I, sorry, we were Kings is out of here. We yeah, were Kings, yeah. Yeah, so NXS is the other speed that could soften Hey Willie a little bit. I, I, I do think Final Form can get another good trip. I'm just worried about a little bit of a bounce. It's paired up two strong numbers. Sure. Uh, can he make it three in a row? But the barn is doing 
really well of late. And we both like the 10-year-old Sam Sparkle. He ran respectable mm -hmm. for 7,500. Starter Lounge Company last out. This race probably a little easier today. He mm -hmm. it was a good second at this level two starts ago. You, hit, you know you'll get an honest effort from Sam Sparkle with your lead, with one of your leading riders, Vargas aboard. Yeah, that was a tough group in that allowance. I think Spirit Grabber might have run in the lower 90s that day, Stan. Now, that's the whole key, though. Will he find himself a little further back? We saw this last time when he went from a mile uh, back to the five-and-a-half or sprinting. He found himself five, six lengths out of it, maybe even a little bit more early. Uh, will that hinder his chances in this race? Boy, he's been uh, just a gem of consistency at the age of 10. Sure. Yeah. All right, nice group of uh, seasoned uh, sprinters mm -hmm. there in race two. Let's take a look at the third race. We're going a mile and a 16th on the all-along turf course. No rail setting for race three. Maiden claiming 16,000 for three-year-olds and upward. I go with a 12-to-1 shot. I think they're going to send right from the get-go here with the two. Stomp dance on this firm turf. They're going to try to steal this race early with uh, your leading rider, the Bug Boy Weston Hamilton. Lightweight assignment, 112. They put the blinkers on uh, this this horse, three-year-old by Ask Andrea, second time in the Kenny Cox barn. He claimed this horse for 10000 This horse has shown a, a, a little, uh, that, that race two back, he showed a little early speed uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of that race, and uh, now he's stretching out to two turns on the turf. I, I, I think the, they have to send right right from the get-go yeah. here with the two-stomp dance. See, see if he can steal it early. Yeah, he had a tough trip last time. You see the short comment, he's back at the three-and-a-half. When we say that, he kind of maybe caught in between horses or caught down inside of rivals and had to just take back to give himself a clear and get relaxed and get a clear clear run stomp dance as you said he has turf reading Escondrea the stallion 13 percent with uh with the turf runners not terrible uh the mayor Chickasaw gal did win going long on the grass stand I like your your user here the two I've got the horse in the mix at a big big price you should get anywhere from 8 10 12 to 1 on the two today all right let's take a look at your top pick uh mm -hmm. Toledo on the nine yes means no for Robbie Bales three-year-old by over analyze uh it, and okay form his last couple races yeah. uh now making his turf debut today certainly looks like now or never. This is on the dirt. I would could be completely against this horse. We've you know he's been burned a ton of money of the fans' money. But here's a little stat that I came up uh, with and found this morning. The stallion over analyzed. He's 24 percent with his runners when they hit the turf for the first time. That's pretty strong. Five sure. for 21. Has a half brother by Stay Thirsty. Was four for nine routing on the grass and ran upwards of a 90 buyer and made 80,000. This is it. He's got the bottom. He can get the distance to ground. Maybe the turf is the answer for yes means no. If it's not, he goes yep. down another notch. Sure, well, some so, yeah. so, some good uh, turf pedigree yeah. notes there uh, for the nine. Yes means no with Toledo. You have to respect uh, that. I'll throw that horse into the mix for sure. Uh, we also like the, we both like the one a little bit here, Conquest Falcon, your nine to five morning line mm -hmm. favorite for Eddie Graham. Beaten favorite for Maiden, 25,000 last September. Really ran, kind of ran a clunker that day. He looked good in that spot and just uh, disappointed that day. Yeah. And then they ran him in, in, in the, 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 the hunt fields down in Virginia <laughs> last October. So he's coming off a long layoff today. Vargas will get a nice ground-saving trip from the inside. But, you know, sometimes it, this outfit might, 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 might give the horse a, a race or two looking for something down the road. But if yeah. he's ready to fire, he should be right there. Yeah, and I'm sure they've got him fit for this race. Dan, a proven turf outfit. Uh, yep. Eddie Graham, they've run some big, big races. Uh, sure. uh, Conquest Falcon, the two-back try prior to the layoff at Laurel. Uh, the legitimate excuse was broke from the ten was hung wide every step of the way. Just took a little bit of starch out of the run. Moving to the inside today uh, will definitely enhance the chances of Conquest Falcon. And you got the seven, Zap Cat, Cat taking a ton of money. Uh, probably very well could be lower uh, than the two to one of what I have on line. He looks like the possible speed of the speed. Stop dance, I think, will be right there with him or stalking. Uh, but Zap Cat, I think it's going to be his race to lose on the front end. But, man, 0 for 22. Uh, I'm going to use him underneath. Uh, maybe you can't toss him out of your multi-race gimmicks the way this turf course is playing, but it's going to be an awfully short price. Now, this is the cheapest he's run uh, on the turf, and this looks like his game going long on the turf, the 7 Zapcat. We have a rider change, make the rider Fergal Lynch yeah. on the 7 Zapcat for trainer Jose Corrales. And how about trainer Jose Cor Corrales? Yeah, Congratulations yeah. to the Corrales barn and Stronic stable as uh, the 7-year-old something awesome by awesome again wins the big million-dollar race at Charlestown last night or yesterday afternoon. He's heading to the grade one Pimlico special, wow. Black Eyed Susan wow. Day. 
Mercedes Oars is stretch right on back out uh, and, and showing a lot of versatility. Good win. I didn't get a chance. I heard some people rooting for him. I know that in the back of the press box. I didn't get a chance to watch the race. Right. I'll go back and watch the run today. Uh, yeah, ha heck yeah. of a race. The fleet really uh, ran a, a, a nice race in that race as well. All right, let's turn the page here. Race four. You'd like the middle pick four here in race four. We're going five and a half furlongs, claiming 5,000 for three-year-olds or four and up. Never won three. Let's take a look at your middle pick four, see how you played it. Okay, $18 ticket. Get you started in the fourth. A couple of scratches. Scratch the two hot sway in the four. Uh, rah, rah, rah. One, six, and eight to get you started. Slick man, your bit, your price user, as is Arizona baby. Moon spell going to be a strong fave. Going to be awfully tough for Kieran from off the pace. Fifth race, we'll go one and ten. Top hat city, circle of light. I think they're maybe the two most proven uh, turf sprinters in the field. Sixth race, the five and the eight. Same thing. My sister's ledge, and she doesn't mind. Uh, if, if we can get by them, you're going to really enhance that ticket. Sure. I couldn't find anybody uh, to beat them. Maybe Brittany Trimble's horse trying the turf for the first time. And then the seventh race, the five, cut time, the eight, be humble, and the nine, two, carry to wide open race. We've got quite a few really wide open races, contentious races on this card, which could provide some really big payouts this afternoon. All right, yeah, fast and firm, nice big fields all on the turf. Let's take a look at race four. We're going five and a half furlongs on the main track, claiming 5,000 three-year-olds or older horses, never won three. I go to the six, Moon Spell, the eight to five favorite here for Kieran McGee, a good second at this level last out when he dropped to this level for the first time, a good second with Edwin Gonzalez aboard. Gonzalez back aboard today, the six, Moon Spell, Catches a soft spot here. I think today looks much the best on paper. We both have the favorite on top here. Yeah, son of great notion. He's looked good on the track. Seven furlongs made a move into a good, honest pace. Had the right kind of setup. Gotham News was just too good that day. Uh, I, I think he's tough right back with some speed. Some speed was scratched out of here with the two Hossway, but double knot spy will flash speed. Toughies, luck, even 50s music will be all part of the pace flow. Uh, Moonspell has the most legitimate kick, it looks like, in here. I'm also going to try the eight Arizona Baby. Was well positioned last time out by Stevie Hamilton. Against a little bit better, hung a little bit late. Uh, I think just shortening up the five and a half will enhance his chances. Yeah, third race back off the layoff for the eight Arizona Baby. So we both like a cold 6 8 exacto there in race four. Let's get a quick commercial break here when we come back nice little carryover in the pick six today that starts in race five we'll take a look right after this Nice new Preakness commercial there. Preakness 143, only four weeks from yesterday. So it's going to be here before you know it. Get your tickets now. Go to the new and improved website, Preakness.com. Check out the new and improved Budweiser Infield Fest, 10-year anniversary out there for the Infield Fest. Big mega stage with Post Malone, 21 Savage. You know all the college kids are going to be out there, and we'll have some great races Odeza, as well. Odessa, yeah. Odessa might be like the kind of the sleeper in the whole yeah. lineup. You know, Frank Walker, DJ Vice. So I'm sure the kids, are, they're going to they're gonna like it this year. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> all right, so get your tickets now, Preakness. Com. Let's take a look here at race five this afternoon, which kicks off the 20 cent rainbow pick six. They, they dumped a bunch of new money into the pick six yesterday, which gives us a nice little carryover over 6,100. This will be well played. It'll be up over 10,000 if you're the only ticket. Yeah. You'll have a nice Sunday afternoon score. Let's take a look at race five. I like the late pick five, which starts in race six. Race five here, we're going five and a half furlongs on the Dahlia turf course with a rail at 52 feet, claiming 16,000 for three-year-olds or older horses never won three i go to the far outside here you like the 10 as well i think this horse is going to get a good trip mm -hmm. circle of light with steve hamilton aboard for mark reed hasn't run since january they gave the horse a race on the dirt that day just to keep him fit through the winter time mm -hmm. this horse with a couple nice races last year on the turf broke his maiden sprinting on the turf here at laurel park way last april and then a nice win going seven and a half furlongs on the turf at delaware a decent effort uh, while uh, with all kinds of trouble his last turf outing last September up there at Delaware. I think he gets a good trip on the outside today with Steve Hamilton. Yeah, blowout win last April sprinting here with a big, big buyer of 76. That would get it done. Uh, and ran incredible uh, with trouble at Delaware against open company. Yep. 
back into condition company this afternoon. Uh, jockey trainer, just just man, they are they are really super strong uh, together. I like Top Hat City though. Has been racing, maybe not quite what he once was uh, back in '17, but he's proven over this turf course. He is the inside speed. He doesn't necessarily need to lead. Uh, Potts with two similar type runners here with Prank Call early in the opener right. and Top Hat City will get position with Toledo. I give him a slight edge over Circle of Light, who will be making a run at him through the stretch. Will uh, show speed from the inside for sure. The one Top Hat City. How about the eight I use in my exact at Conquest Sia coming off a layoff yeah. here for Cal Lynch. Intriguing move here. You get the leading rider Vargas aboard. This horse has the back class. He's a two-time winner on the grass. He's made over 100000 mm -hmm. Last time he was on the grass uh, here at Laurel last summer against two other than Allowance Company. Uh, now, he's a two-turn uh, turf horse. However, right. he did win a nice allowance race going six furlongs mm -hmm. on the turf at Woodbine about two years ago back in 2016. So this is intriguing. Maybe he needs a race and this is just a, a, a prep for a two-turn right. race down the road or maybe he just has has the back class to come late with Vargas aboard. Yeah, maybe sneaking him in for some starters. I don't sure, know. Yeah. Uh, he's going to win without me today. Nice horse. He's had a nice career. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Conquest C, uh, I, I think maybe a little bit better suited to a little bit longer races. It's going to be a short price. You just, I mean, it's virtually an Omni fig when you just throw right. that last dirt race and just go down through the turfs. The buyers are super, you know, against the rest of this field. Uh, the four T-Sizzles, I think, is the one that can make a run of the mix uh, for Mary Epler. Uh, and the five, Stevens answer, another one. Uh, improving speed the last couple races. The only time he tried the turf it was a yielding ground, and he made a little bit of a run. He's laying a little bit closer in his races. I like that today. He's going to need that to get a stalking trip this afternoon. All right, my apologies. We have a video spotlight of your top pick. Let's show you what he did March okay. 11th here, uh, March 11th down at Gulfstream Park. So this horse is racing fit. You have mm -hmm. some horses no coming off the layoff. This horse is fit. Here's his big win last out at Gulfstream March 11th. Yeah, it catches the field. Not the biggest of fields down there at Gulfstream, but, you know, it was a sort of right to the front. Uh, fractions, okay, 22 and 145. They can really rattle off some internals uh, down at Gulfstream Park, but doesn't mind the pressure uh, whatsoever. Edge is clear in mid-stretch and holds firm. That's good enough, guy. Two-back try was a key race. I think Top Hat City uh, with an alert break is going to be around a long, long time. All right, I use them uh, in my in my top three for sure. How about the six summer run for Dale Capuano and, and the Bug Boy? They're 38% together. This horse with a nice maiden win coming from way off the pace last October. Uh, to just f forget that race in November here at Laurel. I had to break from the one hole that day and just, just, just buried the whole time. Uh, this horse, I, I think, is going to like the turf coming back uh, as a four-year-old with Weston Hamilton. Expect the sixth summer run uh, to be coming late at a big price maybe. I think I think he's going to slip through the cracks, no doubt, betting-wise. Um, yep. If you see him bet down below maybe 10-1, to 1, really take note of that. Uh, but still, no reason to get off of him. You're going to get a good price on, a, on a, a rider that's doing well in a barn that's red hot. Yeah, so I'm going to run a possible long shot in the fifth. It's a huge bumblebee I there. I saw that. I saw him circling. <laughs> he's he's uh, ready. Tell he's him to ready. go get the squirrel. He's ready for yeah. He's ready yeah. for the late pick five here, starting in race six. Uh, what do you got, Georgie? Here we go with the uh, late pick five. <laughs> late pick five starts in race six with that industry low 12% takeout starting here in, uh, in race six. I have a ticket here for the late pick five. Uh, let's take a look here. $36 play. I'm going to go six deep here in race six using the one, three, four, five, eight, ten. I have some prices here mm -hmm. in race six. The one, Madam X uh, with the Hall of Famer, Edgar Prado, who was aboard something awesome in that million-dollar win yesterday. Prado nearing 7,000 career wins. He's on the one, Madam X. I think the, the three, Aqua Marina, is live. The four, Oh My, live at a good price. The five and the eight, your favorites. And then the 10, Kitty's right, I think, live at a big price there in race six. So I'm price shopping there in race six. Race seven, I'm using the 189 there. Race eight, my uh, price play of the day, the four, my cousin Lou, a good second uh -huh. against Allowance Company last out going a mile. I like the four, my cousin Lou with Toledo aboard at a nice price there in race eight. Nice allowance race going two turns on the Dahlia Turf Course in race nine. I have the two, Speed Gracer on top at 12 to one, but you have to like the four, six, and nine in there as well. And then I'm gonna key on my best bet of the day. We'll get a nice price because it's a big field. Uh, the 12 Gotham News on the outside is going to get a nice trouble-free trip. Rider change, make it Jevion Toledo on the 12 Gotham News for Lacey Gaudet. Looking for two in a row here. That's my best.
just betting single. Oh, you so, got the so. late rider change. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. that one. Good job. Yeah, yep. Gotham News uh, ran awfully big last time. Was was helped by uh, you know good speed duel up front, uh, but in, in, in really good form right now. Uh, for God that and, and can handle the mild distance. I like your ticket. I like the approach. You've got a good single at a big price. And you're trying to beat those two favorites in, in race six. And awfully short prices on the five. My sister's ledge in the eight. She doesn't mind. You could buy them. Sure. You at your ticket. I, I'm going to tell you one thing. You're, you're taking the whole pool down. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm six deep here in race six. Let's uh, take a look. Well, let's, we have a video spotlight to show you the five I have on top. There's our picks. The five's my sister's ledge. Let's yeah. show you her big win last October in the Maryland Million Ladies Last October here at Laurel Park with Pimentel aboard. Gets up uh, and wins by a game nose. Yeah, right behind the leaders coming past the 316th pole. Needs a little bit of racing room and gets it coming to the eighth pole. Was able to shift down to the inside, and, boy, she just closes relentlessly. A nice little grind under pressure to get up by a nose, a whisker over great soul. Great effort there uh, by my sister's le ledge. Coming out of these two other thens uh, down at Gulfstream, Tougher competition gets the A other than the day. Uh, I, I think it's the five or the eight in here. She doesn't mind. It's going to be my top selection. Motion does this a lot. Gets a little right. tune-up down there in Florida. Comes up here. What do you want to win for? $21,000 pot or 42000 Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. And she did have some trouble early. Uh, bumped around at the break. Then was steadied midway on the final turn. Got out late to close to just miss to a next out winner. West Coast bias a Philly we've seen run well around here. All right, so we both like the five and the eight in race six. We both like the four as well. Oh, my, maybe going to try to steal it on the front end here. Sheldon Russell board for Brittany Tremble. Nice maiden special weight win two starts ago. Going seven furlongs. Ter turf debut today for this Medallia de Oro Philly. I expect to see her on the front end early, I think. Yeah, you have the scratch of the six journey the move, which really kind of might put her right on the lead. Looked at the breeding, has a half-sister that was 6 for 15 sprinting on the turf, uh, made upwards of 360000 and did run in the lower 90. So, yeah, this transition to surface here might work for Oh My. All right, nice allowance contest going a mile on the all along there in race six. Let's turn the page here. Uh, did we miss a, a video spot? No, we showed you. We showed yeah. you the uh, yeah the yep. male and million ladies one. Uh -huh. My sister's ledge. Okay, let's take a look. Race seven is going to kick off the late pick four going six furlongs. Maiden claiming twenty five thousand. Philly mares three and up. I go to the outside. We both go to the outside here for a cold eight nine exact. Uh, the uh, the eight B humble. I like what Kenny Decker did. He uh, stretched this filly out in her second start going a mile. Put her on the front end she got a little tired finished fourth now we're cutting back to uh six furlongs today i like that move louis garcia is going to ride this philly caught a real tough field in her debut behind elevated mm -hmm. vision uh, i like the, th the we both like the eight be humble in her third start today and these decker horses they usually like to be right up near the pace um plenty of speed in this race the blinkers go on final fear uh she'll show speed to uh, you've got the six nightmare, awfully quick internals. Twenty-two and two forty-six and one last time comes out of the same race as uh, Ivy Limey, the seven who adds blinkers. Uh, but be humble, having that stamina build up, stand off the mile is good. And look at the internal fractures. Went back to look that day. Twenty-three and three forty-seven and two three-quarter time and twelve and four. The three-quarter split was two fifths faster than open eleven thousand three-year-old boys. And only a couple fists off of $25,000, boys. I like that yep. move. Shortening up in distance. Uh, be humble, I think, can stalk and pounce in here. All right, so we both like an 8-9 there in race 7. Let's uh, turn the page. couple of big races to go here. In uh, race 8, we're going a flat mile. First level allowance contest, 3 and up. There's some nice 3-year-olds in this race, uh, and you're going with one of them, all right? But they're, they're taking on some tough older right. season horses in this race. Uh, let's start with your top pick. I, I, this horse is interesting. A 3-year-old Cole, he's nominated to the Triple Crown Series. He's won, won his debut as a 2-year-old mm -hmm. last September at Delaware. Good second against Allowance Company. Believe in royalty was that nice uh, tap at Larry Jones, Larry Jones horse that yeah. went down the fairgrounds mm -hmm. and uh, made some noise, I believe. Uh, so now we're with this is a three-year-old debut for this well-bred uh, 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 the Gainsway thoroughbred uh, three-year-old. Blinkers on. First time Lasix today with uh, Fergal Lynch coming off the layoff. Yeah, went and looked. He hasn't had a whole lot, l lot of luck with the double whammy here. The Blinkers on, the Lasix on, but I think this is a good horse. Uh, freshened up since November. Ran fast at two. I always like seeing that. And also out of that race, November 19th with threes over deuces. Just missed in a stake at Charlestown yesterday and also as an allowance winner here. Remington now it catches a little tougher bunch. Uh, I think there's going to be enough flow in the race. This horse will get position. If Fergal should be stalking by the time they hit the lane and going to have to turn it on from there and really put a big charge in his debut. This horse can run fresh. Uh, I Like I said, as he ran fast at two, I think he can move up 
off of his two-year-old form. All right, he, he's probably a very nice horse and uh, strong connections here with Motion and Lynch. Uh, blinkers on, first-time laces. I, I think it's just a real tough assignment coming yeah. coming off the layoff here, going a, a tiring distance, this one-turn, one-mile distance. He catches some uh, some salty older customers in here. You like the four, my cousin Lou, as well. I have mm -hmm. this, uh, this five-year-old on top. He loves his distance. He's seven for eight in the money at this distance with a couple wins. He had a nice rally last out, which was his second race off the layoff. Off, a good second behind winning road. Now his third race off the layoff. I think he's sitting on a big effort here with Jevion Toledo aboard for Alfredo Velasquez. Mm -hmm. He's going to hope things get quick up front. Deal driven, primary speed, max crown, maybe Zig Zillion even with the uh, the addition of blinkers this afternoon and coming off the sprints. Delta Outlaw shouldn't be that far back. But my cousin Lou had no place to run into last time. Stand third off the left. I like the way he finished up. Right. He's going to get a little bit more in front of him. Today, Bovuk, same thing, a victim of the trip last time out. Uh, we're going to pick up Hamilton today. All right, uh, I use the six in my exact. You, you you throw the six out here. Vargas aboard Borsa Vento for Linda Rice. Ran, ran a clunker last out against Stakes Company up there at Aqueduct. Didn't run very well in the mud the time before that earlier. It was a big win first off the claim in February, but in, uh, has re regressed a little bit since then. But yeah. I think you still have to respect the connections here. Two-time winner at yeah. this distance here for the six, Borsa Vento. No doubt. I mean, I, I chased Linda Rice's horses yes, yesterday and, and had a perfect spot uh, in the stake and just couldn't follow through. She kind of had a rough go of it, like one for 20 yeah. the last six months. It's not good. A little uh, cold. Maybe Bursa Venta can kind of change the luck pattern for the barn. Barn's a little cold. All right, so nice allowance race there to kick off the final pick three of the day. Let's take a look at race nine, a two other than allowance feature to kick off the late daily double. We're going a mile and a 16th on the Dahlia turf course here in race nine. Rail setting at 52 feet, and this is my uh, 12 to one long shot here in race nine. The two speed gracer, a four-year-old coming off a layoff. This is his four-year-old debut for trainer Susan Cooney. I love lemon drop kids on the turf, especially when they turn four and five. Speed Gracer was good last year. He had a nice first level allowance win as a three-year-old against older horses last September. Ran a good second behind the, the monster special envoy in the Burt Allen. Uh, the Keeneland race was just too tough and, and then uh, caught, a, caught a good turf course. And a two other than last November, uh, ran into River Deep, who was a very nice horse. And uh, so Susan Cooney does a nice job with her turf horses. This horse with some nice works down there and Virginia Fergal Lynch is going to ride. I'll take a shot here with the with the two speed gracer coming off the layoff. You like the horse like too. It. Yep, absolutely. You got Lynch at a good price, a good turf rider inside with positional speed, gets the firm ground uh, that he prefers. You talked about it. The three back try before the layoff on special envoy, uh, a graded stakes place, kind of a runner. Uh, speed gracer, I think, sits in a good and I, a good spot. I think he slips through the cracks uh, at the window as well. I, I think you're going to get somewhere between 8, 10, 12 to 1 on him. A lot of money's going to flow on do that dance, that melody. They've kind of all run against each other, along with Speed Gracer comes out of similar races last year. Uh, I like that horse at a price. My top selection, first time Phil Schoenthal on the six, uh, do that dance. Fresh and since November, uh, this distance hits him perfectly. He makes a run for mid-pack. Yeah, he was in very good form last year in the, in the Abramson barn. Now first start in the Schoenthal barn. He's 23% with new horses in his barn. This horse also ran into River Deep uh, last out. He'll Schoenthal have him ready to go off the layoff. You get Toledo, uh, the six is going to be awfully tough to beat. We both like the four. Dat Melody has run a couple big races on the Laurel turf here. You get J.D. Acosta to ride. Then the nine on the outside, Kabang coming off a little freshening. Uh, but this horse been running uh, down there at Gulfstream earlier this winter. Had a race down there, a couple races down there at Gulfstream uh, against uh, some some tough co company. And you get Edgar Prado. I, I use all four here, two, yeah. four, six, nine yeah. in the pick six. Yeah, they look like the four. Um, maybe, I don't know what you do with Brighton Lane. I don't know where that race came from last time. Uh, has one sibling that ran okay on the grass, ran an okay number. Looks like some speed. Uh, maybe Intrepid Citizen is a bomb bomb shot, but I, I think that those four are the key horses uh, in race nine. Combine holding pretty good, Kabang holding pretty good for me. Boy, he likes to come from far back and on this turf course. Will it be too much? Uh, but I'm still going to use him into the mix in my multi race bets. All right, so nice upper level allowance feature of the day going two turns on the Dahlia turf course there to kick off the late daily double. Nice beating nickel for you going a mile in race 10, three and up. Haven't won a race in six months, never won four, claiming 5,000. My best bet of the day. Oh, well, you're not kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not giving me too much confidence. This, this is my race best is bet a my scramble. Single. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 this is my best bet in the single here. The 12 Gotham News make the rider Jevy on Toledo. So the weight's going to be 120 on Gotham News with Toledo. A nice win last out. That was a uh, that was a a, 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 a three life race. Uh, that was a, a three life race last out for a nickel. Uh, stays at the five thousand dollar level today. Going against four life horses. This horse good form. Seven for eleven at this one mile distance. Three for three in the money here at Laurel. He's a deep closer. Toledo's going to be out there in the Parkway, uh, <laughs> staying out of trouble, and just hopefully be seven or eight wide in the clear turnover yeah. home and and just try to run him down. Yeah, I think he was a real beneficiary of the way that race kind of melted down last time out will he get that today i don't know and you've got some stayers in here that are going to make him work to the wire but his last year's awfully good he, he you know if he can run it back that, that, that kind of number yeah he's over the top turban i think is a must use for lacy Gaudet, the other Gaudet runner he's as steady as a day is long but a little while uh since a win but i think he's run against consistently better horses uh yeah. through his last several races i think you're going to use him but price horse again i'm going to come back to san cristo used him last time was hung wide against the slower fractions uh smart russian went pretty much wire to wire if i'm not mistaken at a big big price that day picks up a little bit more experience right and sheldon russell and gorham hit it at a pretty good clip at a nice roi i'll take a shot san cristo uh from somewhere about mid-pack as well yeah the gorham barn always dangerous at a price that horse has to back class we both like the two turban he's kind of a, a quirky horse he hasn't won in a while but when he wants to show up uh, yep. he, he's right there he should uh, be right there at this level i think today yeah my bomb bomb shot would be the three day strike in here for damon brought this horse back off of a long long layoff uh got the one sprint going seven furlongs they ran okay in there not too bad not a, an abundance of speed maybe he can steal it on the front all right beautiful weather nice uh cool spring breeze pleasant pleasant spring breeze here by the paddock at laurel park 10 live races for you sunday brunch is cooking up a couple nice carryovers for you good luck hope you join us dave robin he's coming up next with scratches and changes good luck